but that's also an instrument that you love and that you I feel that is <laughs> yeah that was such a gift when they said we want piano score I was like really <laughs> you know so many times especially nowadays with filmmaking the, the melodic sensibility uh, can be something that a lot of directors shy away from you know they feel like a melody is going to step over and and dictate too much of the emotional pull of their characters and you know I, I had the good fortune for instance of working on clemency which was a sundance grand jury winner back in 2019 and that director was very very much about a stark and a stark reflecting the stark environment of the the prison environment the stark environment of the prison system and she was very sensitive to really any music so it's it's it really was a great collaboration because it taught me even more how to be instinctual how you can have tonality that still serves the film without this melodic heavy-handedness but with the Amy Tan documentary you know both both of them the Amy Tan and Rita Moreno um uh were very receptive to melodic and textual intention. And, you know, each project is different. And I just try to show up and be accommodating and pay attention to what's going to serve the film. That's my job. So, and it's all storytelling to me. It seems you got blessed with two amazing projects this year. And I'm glad you got to use jazz and piano. Um, yeah. I haven't seen the Marita Moreno documentary yet, but I'm wondering, is there also a lot of source music that is used and performance footage of her? And that, how did that influence your underscore? And did you have to kind of weave that in or was it separate? Well, yeah, there is. There's not a ton of source music and performance um, per se. I mean, not as much as it could be because she's got such an extraordinary you know, life, lifetime of, of performance, but it definitely um, informed some of the choices that I, that I made, you know, um, some of the excerpts from West Side Story, some of the excerpts from some of the movies that she was in. I was very sensitized about, uh, sensitive about how to have the music inform and kind of blend in to some of those and some of those rhythms and, and, compositional elements you know Rita Moreno she she broke down so many barriers overcoming sexism identity discrimination and she always showed that with pure integrity but you know knowing you and a lot of people I talk to about you you broke down barriers I mean I just mentioned you were the first African-American woman composers in the academy uh, you are really an inspiration for so many composers out there can you talk a little bit about what that means to you and what being a mentor and inspiration and a trailblazer, which you are, means to you. And, you know, um, if you feel there's some responsibility left with that also, or I mean, it might be consciously or unconsciously, you know? Well, first of all, that, that's a, that's quite a, that's very gracious of you, Tomas, because I, um, I've grown to understand the importance of, showing up in, in one's life with not only a deep appreciation for the gift of your life, but a deep appreciation in my case uh, for having this gift of music. And it's so, it's such a force. It's such an instinctual force in me that I let it guide me more and more. And in doing that, I've become more aware of authenticity and the importance of authenticity and the importance of autonomy. And in other words, what I'm saying is, I just think that if if you if you honor who you are and you honor what that means for you, then you you show up affirming that. And that in and of itself, if that can inspire people to to have a sense of their own worthiness and their own purpose, then that's a that's really for me, what it's all about. And, and I don't want to get on like a soapbox about it because, you know, there's a fine line between proselytizing and, and I just think it's just being, you know, I think we're not taught enough about the importance of self-embrace and self-love. We're, we're taught to externalize so much of our validation 
on how we're perceived and did I get into this and these accolades and and life is such a journey. I think that's been the biggest reveal for me is that it's it's full of so many ups and downs. So the only constant is me. So I better get comfortable with myself. I better really enjoy this regardless of the challenges and the the respite, you know. So I just I think that's the main thing that I want to be able to to translate in my actions and my words is, you know, just just love yourself, just be be who you are, and the rest will follow. I know that sounds lofty, but I have found it to be true. 